Okay, so I I have I have a few I have a few thoughts about about the brand new the brand new Final Fantasy 16 video game uh, for the PlayStation 5. Now, Final Fantasy has been like a part a part of my heart for a very 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 long time. Um, I forgot exactly when I got into Final Fantasy, but I believe it was because of Kingdom Hearts that I did so I, I've liked I've liked Kingdom Heart which is which is a spin-off of Final Fantasy obviously. Um but generally I have liked Final Fantasy for about for about over ten years, right? I'm I'm Gen Z. I'm twenty this year, right? So that's about that's about a good chunk of my life. So I mean you don't really fucking think until you're like ten years old <laughs> and even then. So I guess lifelong Final Fantasy fan, right? Um you know I could fucking actually you know what? Where where are we right now? Right, I could just fucking reach right on my shelf. Boom. Right? Motherfucker, we've got this. I've got Final Fantasy posters. I've got a lot, right? So I love Square Enix, right? I resign a lot, a lot to them. Um, you know, so there's a lot of expectations for the brand new the brand new Final Fantasy 16, right? Okay. So let me preface this. Final Fantasy 15, as a lot of us who have played it know, uh, it fucking sucked. Uh, it was miserable, and it misunderstood what Final Fantasy was. Okay, so that was kind of a bad game, but it had interesting ideas. Um, and the last truly great Final Fantasy game, if you're not gonna count 14, because that's a fucking MMO, and I'm gonna be honest, dude. I'll be honest. I don't want to trash any you know Final Fantasy 14 players because I know it's good. I know it's good, right? Right. I'm not. Personally, MMO player, but I, I shower every day, so you know the MMOs aren't really on my schedule. As someone who does, I'm sorry to dock. I'm sure there's plenty of you that do, but listen, that's a long endeavor that I am not willing to take. So we haven't had a truly, truly fantastic mainline game since 10. You know, some people can say 12. I like 12. Okay, 12 is good, but 13 fucking blows. We know that. Um, 11 again, MMO, so we can't really count it. So we're just saying single player, offline, RPG title. There's a lot of eyes on this because the last truly great one was 10. And that was, when was that? 2001? Or it, it was, it was early 2000. So I was either not born or I was a small little fetus baby, right? Okay. So there's a lot of eyes on this game. Again, I've gone most of my life without receiving you know, a very fantastic Final Fantasy. And we got the fantastic Final Fantasy VII Remake, which which is subjective if you like it or not. Um, if you don't understand what it was trying to go for, you're a fucking idiot. That game's a sequel, not a remake. It's a facade, right? But anyways, that's off topic. There's a lot of eyes on this game. And, it, you know, it returns to the medieval theming, which it's been a while. It's been a while. You had kind of like that with ten, And kind of, yeah, kind of like that with twelve as well. But they are like, kind of like fantasy derivatives i want to say like alt fantasy so when we get a proper proper dark fantasy right this is, this is a fucking this is a rated i don't know what it this is a rated ms game it is, it is violent violent i mean there there are depictions and you know i'm generally not a very very sensitive person when it comes to some topics but you know spoilers not really um, the, 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 there are some scenes that are le that, that even legitimately made me cower a little bit. Um, you know, th this shows like a, a like a nine year old girl getting like her fucking like throat slit, kinda like just blooding like blood just pooling down a little bit slowly. Um, the, there's scenes of like like attempted rape and stuff. So this is a very very dark fantasy. This is a very graphic game, and I think as far as returning to kind of like real fantasy roots. And, and being really dark, it succeeds. It hits the nail on the coffin with the theming. Now, that I've gotten that out the way, we have to talk about the more pressing subject as to why I give it a, a kind of seven out of 10 now. Now this is, this is me a quarter way through this game. I have not finished this game at all and there's still a good amount left for me to get to, okay? So let's start here with the gameplay, the combat. It is very good. However, and I say I say however because 
you can't just focus on the combat with an RPG without focusing on other gameplay aspects. So let's say this. You have a skill tree and an RPG that'll give you more moves or whatnot, or you can customize your equipment and whatnot, give yourself different effects, or you can customize your, your magic output and whatnot. Um, that isn't essentially very present in this game. This game is an action game, like something akin to Devil May Cry, um, which I, I haven't personally played. Uh, it's been on the backlog for a really long time. Um, I don't know much about it, because I've never really been one into the action hack and slash. Like, I, I've played, uh, I played a good bit of Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, and I've played a little bit of Bayonetta, but as far as the action game genre goes, I have not been into it so much. Um, my favorite, my personal favorite genre of video game, I hate to admit it, uh, is JRPG. These games are fucking boring and miserable at times. These games' stories are, are needlessly complicated. Um, there, there's a lot to it, right? Um, so I think, I think 16 thematically is very good, but it is not a good RPG, and that is a damn, damn shame. Um, the elements feel half-baked um and especially i'll get up to this the leveling the leveling in this game is a big big issue now i'm gonna i'm gonna bring this up because I, I recently talked about it um not on this channel this is this is gonna help actually not to get off topic but this is gonna help this video in particular because i am working as of currently on a script rate for a large jrpg centric video so you know, this is, this is going to help. Maybe my opinions on the games will change after. Who knows? So I'll bring this up because I played it very recently. Um, the first Xenoblade Chronicles. Um, that is an RPG-ass RPG. Now, if you are familiar with RPGs, you'll know what I'm talking about. You know, big open areas, plenty of enemies and side quests to fight, um, plenty of dialogue options and alternate... Um, conversation scenarios that you can have with your party and plenty of character customization and a lot of self-insert stuff now say you you have a character in xenoblade like like shulk who is an established character okay however there is enough in that with your experiences to you know talk to people or change your equipment out or change your look a little bit enough to kind of be a self-insert even though it is its own established character now you go to someone like clive where there are not a lot of in-depth side quests so far in this game. And there is, I think, almost... Yeah, there is no custom ability at all whatsoever in this game. And I honestly, I stay... I'm a very canon player. I don't... I think self-inserts are good, but I don't really like them. If there's an established character, I'm going I'm to keep the canon look. I'm not really going to change it often. So it's not too big of a detriment to me. However, considering it is an RPG... This is a disappointing element, regardless if it is one that I prefer or not. Um, there are three, um, about three or so uh, areas of equipment in this game. So you have your weapon, your armor, and your accessory, I'm pretty sure. And then there's three other slots for accessories. So you have three main armor slash weapon equipments and three accessories. Now... That is okay, right? However, however, there is there is not enough in this equipment side to, to justify it being a proper RPG. Now, let's let's look at something like Breath of the Wild, which it is debatable. If, not Breath of the Wild. Like, sure, Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, why not? Zelda. It is debatable if that is a JRPG because that is an open world action game, kind of. Right? Action adventure, not particularly action because there's a lot of adventure. Um... But, you know, it's got a lot of role-playing elements. That game has a more fucking in-depth equipment system than Final Fantasy XVI. Now, this is important because Final Fantasy is, like, the second granddaddy to JRPGs other than Dragon Quest. So there are a lot of eyes on this. This is a very, very prestigious title and a very, very prestigious franchise. Now, let's get into the bad of this game. The party system is flawed there is not an established party that you can swap in and out of now i know i know in my experiences with jrpgs and in general 
There's a little. There we go. <laughs> in JRPGs and in general, um, there will be party members that will come and go, and you can equip it as you see fit. This is a completely linear party system. People will come and join, but not on your own volition, and you won't be able to keep and customize them. So say you'll have three party members over here. Let, let's just say, all right, so we have the main character, Clive. We have Torgal, which is his dog, who will always stay with him. And then recently, because there's only two more over here, and I'm, I'm, it's not really spoilers, so I'm just going to say, um, we've, we've got Sid and Jill. Um, Sid, you know, being a reoccurring character who, who gets, uh, how do I put this, I guess reanimated for each Final Fantasy game. He's just, all he needed to know is that Sid, Sid is a character who is a blank slate who shares nothing in common with his other iterations aside from name. It's just, it's just, there's, there's always a Sid in Final Fantasy. So that's not really, you know, anything. Um, but you have Sid, Jill, and Torgal. So far, where I'm at in this game, which is about, it's, the game says I'm a quarter way through, and we'll get to that in a minute. But you have those party members. And when they come and go, you cannot select to swap them out or change their equipment or level them up at all. They'll show for a portion, go, leave, come back, or just not return at all. And it is very upsetting. So you don't get to customize the equipment on these people at all. You don't get to customize their moves. You don't get any level of gameplay intimacy with these other characters. They just join to kind of do a few hits alongside you, and, and that's about it. Um, so the party system is lackluster, and it is kind of miserable. Now, we get to the world, which... I don't know if I'm a little insane for expecting this. Um, to preface, I don't really like open world games. They've never really been for me. They feel like a little too close, not closed up, a little too open for what's offered. And I feel like there's just a lot of bloat in open world games, right? So it's not necessarily my favorite genre. Um, so now you get to Final Fantasy 16, which I felt like should have been an open world game. However, what I feel isn't what the developers want to make. So I feel like that is an unfair expectation. I can let that slide. However, it is 2023. We are paying $70 for the next big iteration of Final Fantasy. I don't think it's, it's very inane to expect not only, not maybe an open world to reach, but a better world. So what does this game offer to do? It offers to do open area, which if you're not familiar with that, you have these points of interest in your map and you select it and it is like an open field kind of area where you get to roam around. So it's a kind of like a mini open world, right? Which would be good if it was serviceable. Now the open worlds or the open areas in Final Fantasy 16 are miserable. Um, they are divided in such a strange way um, to where a lot of them will just have lakes around. And that's like, whatever, okay, there's a lake. You cannot cross or swim through these lakes whatsoever to get to another point. So say there'll be a thin, thin ravine, or not even a ravine, because there's not even pit. Just be like a thin lake that, you know, a thin threshold of water that you can either, realistically, right, as, as is the expectation, you'd be able to walk through or swim through. You cannot do that. You have to instead walk around this entire area to go and get to that point. Now, we talk about this, right? Because this is a PlayStation 5 open area. I cannot swim through water to get to another point that's 15 feet across from me. I'm going to bring this up again, right? Because I think, I think I played it, and it is fantastic. And it is almost a perfection of this, this genre. Xenoblade Chronicles 1. On the motherfucking Nintendo Wii. That, that system is a calculator. My grandmother plays bowling on that to this day. Okay? That is not a machine for anyone who is looking for any vast adventure or anything. The open areas in that are far better, and it makes me wish for so much more in 16. Now, in that game, with their open areas, you can swim through the lake and get through things. You can jump off things. You can climb up vines in the walls. There is not that kind of depth here especially for a modern game. Now, Xenoblade Chronicles is, I believe, to be 13 years old this year, and that game has a way more vast open area than this could ever hope to have. Now, let's get into back to Final Fantasy 16. We have 
enemies in this inside quest in this open area, which you would expect, right? There are, and this is this is about a quarter way through the game where I'm at right now. I'm in this open field area, this big outside of the castle kind of area. There are four fucking side quests in this entire open area, and there are barely any fucking enemies, and they give off jack shit for EXP. So why that is important is because these side quests give you barely any EXP, and these enemies give you barely any EXP either. So most of your EXP you are going to be getting is from the main missions. Now, this would be... Actually, no. It would never be okay in an RPG, because RPGs, you are meant to go and take it at your own pace, and you are meant to go and kind of roleplay and, and level up your character to however you want. If you want to under-level them as much as you want, or if you want to over-level them as much as you want. Again, I bring up Xenoblade Chronicles because I think it is a perfect depiction of this genre. Now, in that game, I was having a conversation with my brother who has also played the game as well. I was at the halfway point through that game and I told him I was level 45. He had replied to me that he was level 65 in this area. Now that is what you should be able to do in a JRPG. You should be able to take it at your own leisure and you should be able to go and get to any area that you want the way you want and however you want. This game keeps it as linear as it fucking gets. The main missions in this game, and I have to call it that now because that's that's upsetting. RPG should not be a linear genre. Um, these are literal levels. Like, actual fucking levels, dude. And it is upsetting because it's like, okay, you can replay these levels from a fucking level select. I don't think I've ever played an RPG where there's a goddamn level select. Now, this is problematic because... If you are going level by level and you are earning your EXP mostly through those levels and not through additional content that's in the world, like you should be if you want to go out and do that, that creates a very massive problem, especially, especially in a hack and slash action RPG game like this. This keeps you on an incredibly linear path that the developers want to keep you on deliberately. So say you are going to be doing this level at level 15, and that's a little funny to say, this stage at level 15, right? You are going to be doing that with everyone else. Most people, and I mean, if you're really fucking grinding, really grinding these fucking scenarios that, that are in the game, in the open world or open area or whatever, which is almost impossible to do, but if you're mind-numbingly doing that, then maybe, just maybe at most, you'll be two levels over, right? But this keeps you in a fucking level lock so every scenario is going to be the same. And this goes for equipment as well. After you beat a level, you'll get better equipment. So after each level, you'll probably ask yourself, hey, what's the newer equipment I can have? So you are going to be kept on this linear character path for the entire game at each stage. Now this is a problem, a very, very big problem. Um, why this is problematic? Because because, and I'm not going to say this lightly, because it is a fucking action RPG. If you are not good at these, right, like turn-based, there's there's a bit of methodicalness to it, right? Even if you're lower level, you, it's like chess. You can play your cards right. If it is an action game, especially a fast-paced one like this, and you cannot, say if you're bad at it, you can't level up a little bit to just make it easier for yourself, you're kind of fucked. And, and that's not cool. And I don't, I don't like that at all whatsoever. Now let's talk about the next subject and probably our second to last subject I want to put on this. The gameplay. Not the gameplay, my bad. <laughs> the... Oh, I just forgot. So we'll get on to the, we'll get on to the intended last subject. Um, so, the story sets out. And this is going to be spoilers. So if you care, if you care at all, please just fucking stop watching this video. Because this will spoil the shit. Well, it's just like the first two hours of the game. So, I mean, unless you play the demo. That was the hook, right? That was the hook. That, the demo was the hook. So if you didn't play that, or if you don't really want to hear this, you don't want to be spoiled, please go off. Um, so, anyways, the crux of why that demo and opening hours was so good is that as Clive, the main character, kind of a younger man, I want to say 18, 17 around that time at the start of the game, his little brother gets gets pretty fucking, like, I mean, he's like eight, nine years old, I think. He gets, like, brutally fucking murdered. Like, you are hearing these blood-curling 
fucking screeches and it kind of made my heart sink and my spine go cold so when i saw that scenario happen i was like holy fuck dude i have to play this i have to see what is going on i have to avenge my fucking little eight-year-old brother who was just brutally murdered in front of me right it is revealed it is revealed a fucking quarter way through this game that this fucking kid this eight-year-old is still alive and that ruins the entire motivation of this fucking game the entire point of this game why i'm playing is to avenge this because it is unfair now knowing a quarter way through it would be shit if it was revealed later on after because it's just a bad thing to do it just completely eliminates the train that is rolling if you show off that this kid who is central to the the main plot setup of the game his death is central to that and you show that he is still alive you have just lost all fucking traction buddy all of it is gone and that that's that's pretty bad um other than that the cutscenes are genuinely fantastic um and there, there's a lot of good the graphics are unbelievable the cutscene and the voice acting are fantastic i just feel that slowing down the main crux of the story like that by twisting an already insane plot twist is kind of fucked and the reason that i wanted to play this game so bad was because that moment where your little brother dies was so fucking shocking and to undo that undoes my motivation for the game now let's talk about length and leveling this will be our last subject the PlayStation 5 does this cool little thing where it will show you your game progress, how far you are through the main story. I am approximately 24% through this game, which, you know, if we're looking at fractions and whatnot, this is a fourth of the game, a good quarter. Problem is, I have five fucking hours on this game, three of which are probably spent, three or two, are probably spent watching cutscenes. The other two or three gameplay i am a quarter way through with five hours in a japanese rpg this genre is known to be at least 50 hours long if we are thinking and we are averaging this out this will take me 20 25 at most 30 hours to beat mind you i spent 100 dollars on this game for the deluxe edition and i bought an entire console just to play this because of the exclusivity because i love final fantasy that much if i am getting only 30 fucking hours out of a jrpg mind you a 2023 one as big as this that i spent that much money on that is beyond disappointing now leveling there is a level cap of 50 in final fantasy i shit you not level fucking 50 is the cap on this game's standard story mode now i was kind of spoiled about this but i don't really give a fuck because it's not really a spoiler i didn't find this out intentionally i was told this now that is incredibly disappointing disappointing <laughs> disappointing i mean in of itself i don't like that whatsoever if this massive game or what, I, what i'm assuming to be massive is 30 hours long and the level cap is 50 and i am level 21 right now with five hours in this game that is that is shocking that is beyond shocking i don't feel like i got my money's worth or the fucking console's worth at all and another thing with how this game is this is a movie game so you know games like the last of us or god of war spider-man those kind of games where you're kind of playing them and they're eating popcorn for like half of it this is one of those now granted it is very good at what it does i think the story is very good minus you know the part where your fucking little brother's still alive i think the delivery and the performance of these actors are very good and that the story setup is good however it is a little disappointing that i'm watching half of it rather than playing it and every gameplay scenario is incredibly linear um there might be another subject because this is off script that i wanted to say um that i can't really figure out about um but Oh yeah, one last thing, one final thing. I wanted to talk very briefly about this deluxe edition. This will be the final thing. I've said this a few times, but this really is it. This deluxe edition right here, $100. What do you get compared to this from the base game? Now, I only spent 
I, I pre-ordered the normal edition of this game, right? You know, like, you're not going to play it if you don't get it, right? And that's already a $70 game, which is a markup from the standard that was $60 about a year or two ago. Now, that kind of sucks already in of itself, but whatever. What am I going to do? Not play the game? Maybe. <laughs> but, it, but I want to play it, so I'm going to spend $70 because there's no other way. Now, because the demo was so good and so promising, I was convinced to shell out the extra 30 boon bucks without knowing what the fuck is in this. Because I was like, okay, this is cool. Because I really wanted to go unspoiled because I had that much faith in this. For 30 extra dollars... Let me open this up really quick. The 70 of it is the base video game, right? Which I have swapped out and uh, opted to use the... Uh, the reversible cover art, which is the Japanese one, which I feel looks far better. Now, you have the American one over here, which is kind of... You can't really see it much through it, but it, it's kind of like that generic... Okay, we just got a lot of characters in a collage or, or whatnot. I prefer this a bit more because it's got, it's got the logo elements of... Um, you've got Phoenix right here and a Freet right there. So, it's got the logo elements. I like this. But we've ditched the main logo. That This is, this is just... A minor thing so this is this is just stupid what i'm going on about so anyways you get the base game and you get two other things mask yourself what are these other two things we have a steelbook in my opinion this doesn't look very good at all this is not a good looking steelbook now normally i don't really like steelbooks because i think if I, i'm someone who when i'm displaying things on a shelf i think this spine or just the way it looks will kind of disrupt so i opt to not use them a lot of the time but if there is a very very good steel book i don't have it on me right now um but i'll just say for instance um i hate to keep on going on about it but xenoblade chronicles 2 has a fantastic looking steel book this is not now you've got the logo right over here on the other side over here on the inside you have a free Okay, so it's like, whatever. You get a steelbook. There is only one other item in this. Now, I've got it on my wall right now. And since this is a mounted camera, I unfortunately cannot show it. But to the camera, it is it is a wall map. So for 30 extra dollars, you are getting a piece of cloth. Which, which you know, honestly... It is nice that it is a cloth map because a lot of times when these come in, it's just a paper poster and it's honestly shit. So I appreciate that. But you are getting a fucking piece of cloth and another case that you might or might not use and it's not even that good looking. Now, let's get into another thing. There is the Digital Deluxe Edition, which is the same price. But only for that, you get a digital soundtrack and a digital art book, as well as an exclusive sword. You don't get any of these digital items for getting the physical edition. Now, that already is bad enough. But if I am paying $100, and you, they're paying also $100 for digital, I would expect for 30 extra dollars, you at least include a music CD or a small art book with that. I don't think that would be very hard to do. So not only are you missing out on the digital items, you're not getting anything else physical to compensate for what extra the players are getting digital now i guess you could say the trade back is as you are getting a cloth map and a steel book but for 30 dollars really i don't know um these again like i said i'm only a quarter way through with five hours i mean that's that's already bad enough so it could change the other three-fourths could change my opinion but for now i can't help but give it a seven out of ten um this has been the most famous man on the internet, giving the greatest, greatest opinions of all time. Um, and I'll see you all later when I, when I get to making the, this wonderful, wonderful big video uh, that may or may not happen because I don't keep my word very well with this kind of thing. But I am writing a script for that, and that should be done. I want to reach by the end of the year because that's going to be a big project. All right. Um, thanks for listening to the, the, the stupid rant, um, and have a good one.